This is the rewrite of my story, so called. I repeat, this is a rewrite. This is not an entirely new story. I apologize for that, but as I already said on my community tab, I'm really not feeling it this week. Anyways, let's get right into the intro. <coughs> Hello, my darlings. It's Zoe here. And today, I'm bringing you a Bakugo X listener fanfiction. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed rewriting it. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon and a merch store. It would be great if you could check both of them out and maybe donate something towards me. This would ensure that I have enough money to keep doing this on YouTube. Thank you for your consideration. But of course, there's the chance that you cannot afford it, which is fine, this is absolutely understandable. In that case, however, I would like to simply ask you to share the video around. Share it everywhere you can, Discord, Skype, post it on Twitter or Facebook, and send people my way. Also, watch the video until the end, like or dislike the video, and comment something down below. And if you're new here, hey, subscribe and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful darling doll army. This is the best way you can support me indirectly, so YouTube pays me a little bit more. Now, let's get right into the show. It was winter. For most people, a nice time of serene Christmas movies, snowball fights and eggnog. The only people who weren't enjoying it were you and people who needed to drive to work. You were cursed with a disability, a mutation quirk, making your body very much alike to an amphibian. Venom secretion, enhanced agility, and wall crawling. But sadly, also cold blood. So winter turned into an act of survival that ironically was ignored by pretty much everyone. After all, quirks and mutation quirks were the normality now. Of course, you had to have been born in the awkward time where quirks were openly accepted, not special, and not powerful enough to do anything truly badass with them. At least you had it better than your dad's business partner. His quirk was having a quickly regrowing pumpkin forehead he could throw. Well, this made him quite popular at Halloween parties. Try having a serious financial discussion with a jack-o'-lantern that spoke in a heavy New York accent. Very difficult to say the least. And unlike your friend Sue, who despite everything was still looking quite human, your skin was a smooth, soft pink. And while it did require you to regularly moisturize it, plus, thanks to your mother's side of the family, you had these weird fins sticking out around your cheeks, similar to the antennas of an axolotl. You could stay dry for a while, allowing you to avoid weird situations where you would have to leave class just to do exactly that. The problem was getting warm to start the day off. You were just so cold. We even had troubles walking. Your heater was set on max, and you were wearing two layers of clothing, but still it was just freezing. On wobbly legs, you made it to the door, being glad it was a Saturday. With shaking hands, you opened your door and felt the cool air of the outside waft across your face. It made a sickening feeling build up inside your gut. It felt like a thousand of needles were shooting right through your face. You just wanted to grab a bite and then immediately go back to bed. After you somehow managed to reach the common room, you sighed in relief. Only Bakugo was present, staring at his phone. He ignored you. Hey. You mumbled with a blush, too quiet for him to hear. You didn't know why, but you had sort of a crush on him. Stumbling over to the kitchen aisle, 
you grab chocolate bars and a can of that weird soda brand that often just appeared out of nowhere in the fridge. Halfway back through the common room, you begin to feel queasy and groaned loud enough for Bakugo to notice. Shut up, I'm watching YouTube. His face turned to shock when he saw your disoriented frame. You okay? He shouted over to you, throwing his phone on the sofa next to him. Before you blacked out, you felt strong arms grabbing your slender frame. It was just so cold. The first thing you noticed upon regaining conscious was that something warm and soft was wrapped around you, like a heated blanket, and that both your heartbeat and breathing was normal. Katsuki must have called someone for help. Then you heard a light snore right behind your ear. Slowly you opened your eyes, followed by a shower of embarrassment. While you were back in your room and your bed, it wasn't really your bed that you were lying on. Your lips quivered as you realized that Bakugo was under you, his arms wrapped around you, and you panicked. Did he do something to you while you were blacked out? Was he secretly a worse pervert than the little purple guy who was creeping on the other girls? To this day, you were not sure whether or not it was an insult or a blessing he stayed away from you. Another snore came from Katsuki. He sounded like a big growling kitten. Yeah, an angry ball of fluff. Wait, why were you thinking that? You blushed and tried to calm down. Whenever you managed to get warm after a blackout, everything just felt so awkward. You carefully wiggled your legs. Yeah, you were still wearing pants. Probably the same ones. Hopefully the same ones. Oh god, please be the same ones. Then you wiggled your toes and confirmed that you still were wearing two layers of socks. With a meek whimper, you stared at the ceiling. Did he really not take advantage of you? You knew you weren't the prettiest girl in UA, but were you too ugly for that even? Your blush returned when you realized what the fuck you were thinking about. Bakugo mumbled something in his sleep and his grip tightened. You let out a squeak and began to feel like a rubber ducky. And suddenly his grip tightened even harder and he shook under you for just a second, followed by a groan. You woke up with a soft, sleep-drunken morning. He looked down at your embarrassed expression. Uh, sorry about this. What was with that stupid grin? You fell, and, like, your skin was really cold, so... I thought, i do what Shoji did with Tsu during the license exam. No, this made more sense. You know, keep you warm. Uh, sorry if I was a bit rough. It's fine, you whispered, barely audible. You felt ashamed and didn't really know why. Uh... You hungry? He asked and you nodded. He let go of your waist and you immediately missed the feeling. And then you two sat up. He pointed at your nightstand. There, neatly stacked on top of each other, were your chocolate bars. After being thoroughly stuffed, you happily sighed, not even realizing you had sunk back into Katsuki's arms. Now it was his turn to be flustered. But he had an oddly satisfied look on his face. At the same time, however, he was unsure whether to cuddle up with you again or not. You know, I never had it easy as an Elmo Purple. You know, 
I never had it as easy as normal people, you said with a melancholy tone. He suppressed a sigh. He really didn't care about your sob story, but he had enough tact at his bones to let you speak. After all, you had just blacked out. When I was a kid, I was always the oddball. And at the same time, I wasn't. I needed special care because of my mutation, but no one cut me some slack, because it's normal now. Hell, we had a girl that had mermaid legs. For a moment he thought about the practicality of mermaid legs, but he couldn't think for long, because you rolled around and pressed your chest against his as you gave him tear-filled puppy eyes. Children are awful, Bakugo. Especially when they don't understand something. He gave you an unsure smile. He wasn't sure what to say. And you sniffled. Why can't my quirk be something simple and cool like yours? Why do I need special care that is just so annoying? Once again, you felt his muscular arms wrap around you. I mean, no one fucks with me, he chuckled. <laughs> Just stay close to me, all right, and no one will touch you. You looked into his crimson eyes. Up until now, you haven't seen him as someone so soft and likable. He always came off as a rough anti-hero who would kill villains for fun if he was allowed. Yet, somehow, you had found yourself attracted to him. And your heart skipped a beat. Was your silly little crush turning into actual love? His hands rubbed over your back. Feeling better? He mumbled into your ear after a while. You bit your lower lip. You wanted to keep cuddling with him. But you were also feeling better. You know I'm not a good liar. Bakugo chuckled. And what does that mean? Do you have a crush on me? You looked at him, dumbfounded. Yes, Captain Obvious. His grin turned cheeky. Nice. What do you mean, nice? He shrugged. I just thought all girls were afraid of me. Just nice knowing someone knows how to appreciate my greatness. You suppressed the blush and the giggle. Who would have thought Bakugo was such a dork? But was he your dork? You just had to find out. You were a risk taker after all. So does this mean you like me too? He looked down at you. Of course. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Or else I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't be... Uh, he blushed. Be cuddling with little old me? He didn't answer and just looked outside the window next to your bed. You giggled. <laughs> Love you too, Bakugo.